Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. So, this is another one of the buddy reads that I set up through my 10 books I want to buddy read thing. And uh, I will read you the blurb and then we'll get to it. Hidden in the heart of the old city of Barcelona is the cemetery of forgotten books, a labyrinthine library of obscure and forgotten titles. To this library, a man brings his 10-year-old son, Daniel, one cold morning in 1945. Daniel is allowed to choose one book and from the dusty shelves pulls The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carax. But as Daniel grows up, several people seem inordinately interested in his find. What begins as a case of literary curiosity turns into a race to find out the truth between the life and death of Julian Carax and to save those he left behind. Includes reading notes, shortlisted by Richard and Judy's book club. Now. I feel like I should have been warned by the fact that this was shortlisted by Richard and Judy's book club because I did not like this, I'm afraid. So, after The Book Thief, I didn't think... Uh, I mean, I didn't hate The Book Thief. I just thought it was okay. And this, for me, was a bit less than okay. It was very, very dull. So, in The Book Thief, I, I said that The Book Thief was like... Uh, it was like squash, or uh, Americans call it cordial, I believe. When you water it down too much and it just tastes like off water. And this was just like off water. It was like stagnant water, I guess. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've been saying it was a bit like... It reminded me of a Dan Brown novel, except really slow-paced. And say what you will about Dan Brown, but the one thing he does have going for him is that his novels are fast-paced. So don't get me wrong. There are bits in this that are, were beautifully written. It's very quotable. It's just also very, very dull. Like... It has this storyline, and it started out slowly, and I was like, oh, maybe it's going to get a bit faster. And it just starts out slowly, and then just peters out completely, and then goes off on a tangent. And then near the end of the book, when it all kind of comes back together again, it was really weird because... So I knew I was meant to be surprised because something bad happened to a character, or a, there was a sudden twist in the plotline. But I didn't care, because I wasn't at all engaged with the story. I didn't like the characters. There was one. Furman was alright. He was fine. But even then, I didn't particularly like him. I just didn't hate him as much as some of the others. Daniel, the main character, is awful. He makes some really bad decisions. He's like 12 years old and gets obsessed with this blind girl who's in her 20s. Then he lets herself, himself into her house and walks in on her having sex. And also he gets really annoyed when or upset when she doesn't go to his birthday party because she has a music lesson. And he's like, couldn't she have cancelled her music lesson? And it's like, stop being such a, like, entitled little dick. And the entire story was like that. Later on as well, he then decides he's fallen in love with this girl whose fiancé is in the army. And so he starts having sex with her. And it's like, mate, she, she, she's engaged. Like, oh, how can you, how are you supposed to like this character? I don't understand. And so, yeah, spoiler alert, if you want to read this book, I don't recommend it personally, but if you want to read this book, stop watching now. But yeah, he gets shot at the end. And it's like, it's like this big twist that he gets shot, and I'm like, good, yes, finally, he got a shot. Except that's a lie, because I wasn't even that engaged with the story. I, I just read it and was like, okay. And then we have this these reading notes at the end. Oh, there's a question here. Humour plays an important part in the book. How would you describe that humour? Were there particular passages or characters that you found amusing? No, but again, that's another one of the problems that I had with it, is that I knew it was supposed to be humorous, and that's why it fell flat for me. I, I said in my email train to the others, it's like, uh, it was like watching a bad magician. So, like, you know you're meant to clap or whatever, or be amazed at the trick that they've done, but you can see how they've done it, so it's like, well... Yeah, yay! I mean, again, we have all these bits, all these bits towards the start, like the cemetery of forgotten books is a really cool idea, and then it's hardly in the story. I mean, this wasn't even, like, mostly filler, it was just all filler, it just, it took a good idea and poorly executed it. Yeah, so this is the creepy-ass fucking main character here. So he's broken into her house to get the book back, basically, and he's like, I would take the book and disappear from Clara Barcello's life forever. Quietly, I stepped out of the library. The door of her bedroom was just visible at the end of the corridor. I pictured her lying on her bed, asleep. I imagined my fingers stroking her neck, exploring a body I had conjured up from my fantasies. Which is really fucked up anyway, or whatever. Just stand there in the house that you've broken into, picturing yourself stroking the girl, that's fine. I turned around, ready to throw away six years of daydreaming, but something halted my step before I reached the music room. A voice whistling behind me, behind a door. A deep voice that whispered and laughed. 
in Clara's room. I walked slowly up to the door. I put my fingers on the doorknob. They trembled. I had arrived too late. I swallowed hard and opened the door. Then we have the new scene. Clara's naked body lay stretched out on white sheets that shone like washed silk. Maestro Neri's hand slid over her lips, her neck and her breasts. Her white eyes looked up to the ceiling, her eyelids flickering as the music teacher charged at her, entering her body between pale and trembling thighs. The same hands that had read my face six years earlier in the gloom of the Atene Ateneo now clutched the maestro's buttocks that were glistening with sweat, digging her nails into them and guiding him towards her with desperate animal desire. It's just really fucked up, man. Like, I don't know, I'd even if you did break into somebody's house and imagine yourself caressing their neck or whatever and then walked into their room and found them having sex with somebody it then seems a bit much to then notice all these little details and stuff I mean personally I have actually walked in on somebody having sex before I did the very British thing of going oh sorry I'll just uh, I'll just be going now then and I uh, walked out so but then I, I hadn't broken into the house, so I don't, I don't know. After about 150 pages in, I was only reading it to finish it. I would have DNF'd this if I was reading it by myself, but because we were doing the buddy read, I continued reading it and got to the end. I'm going to read you a few of the things that have been said in our little chat, because not everyone agrees with me. So let's have a look. Who did I read this with? So I read this with Mindy from Mindy's Book Journey. Jennifer from Novel Crawler was going to read it with us, but then pulled out because she couldn't get it from her library. We have Nashua from Nashua Reads, uh, and Liz Schuber as well, who isn't a booktuber, but uh, she doesn't have her own channel, but she does watch. So, what did people say? People say so. Liz said, "I've reached 100 pages. So far, it reminds me of my brilliant friend or the Goldfinch in writing style, which I didn't like either of those books." I'm a little bored with the plot, hoping it picks up soon. Is this classified as YA? Which I guess it is because it follows a young character, I don't know. Mindy said, I was hooked from the first chapter, I love how he describes books so beautifully. I'm definitely excited for a book about the magic of books. That's not what you're getting with this by the way, this is like... Not about that. Uh, Nashra said, Hi guys, I think it's a beautifully written book and I'm really liking the gothic vibe. I haven't read anything like this in a while, which may be a contributing factor. I'm 150 pages in and mostly switching between the audio and the physical copy. The audio version is making the book more enjoyable because everything is pronounced with an accent. I've never read The Book Thief, but I feel like that would be a bit similar in terms of how young the protagonist was when it started, the time period it is set in and the cover of the book. By the way, even though I didn't particularly like The Book Thief, I would much rather reread The Book Thief than ever go near this book again. Or I'd rather reread The Book Thief than read a different book by this author. So then I, repl I replied, I'm with Liz unfortunately. I actually probably would have DNF'd it if I hadn't been buddy reading it. I'm about 350 pages in and as I was cheeky and started early on Sunday when I was spending some time travelling. I did like the way it started and I think it's very quotable but I'm not enjoying it. I really dislike Daniel for some of the things he's done and I think the plot has slowed down so much that I keep forget what's happening. Mindy said, I'm about 150 pages in now, I'm still really enjoying the writing and mysterious atmosphere. I like that feeling of not knowing exactly what's going on with the faceless man, the apartment and the letter. Although I have a guess on how it all fits together, I think she's probably right there. However, my guess doesn't completely make sense. I love it. So far, I'm still liking Daniel. I'm curious to hear more about why you are not liking the story. Nashra said, there's a character called Furman and I really like him. I think he's quite funny. I don't dislike Daniel, I'm kind of indifferent to him, but I'm still enjoying the mysterious aspects. Chances are I'm falling behind on the book and won't be done on Sunday. I, I replied around here saying, I've almost finished it, I'm about 30 pages from the end and I'm so done with it. I can't remember the last time I've been so bored by a book. It's kind of falling flat because there are all these scenes that are meant to be high tension etc or big reveals, but I'm not engaged with the story so I don't really care. It's like watching a bad magician. Liz said, well, based on that, I'm going to bail on this. I have no patience for slow books right now. Dane, thank you for coordinating this buddy read. Maybe I'll join in on something else in the future. Mindy said, well, this sure seems to be a polarizing book. You either love it or you hate it, I suppose. And then she said, I think I've come to the bad decision he made. And I can't believe that he was encouraged by his friends and family. Which actually I think is one of the different bad decisions, but... uh. You know, he made a lot of bad decisions, that character. So yeah, rating time, because I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm so over it. I still have to write my review for it for my blog and Goodreads as well. Um, it's a 2 out of 5 for me. 
the only redeeming factors are the occasional bits of nice prose. The the idea, the concept is great. It's just been really, like, really wasted, in my opinion. And it, it kind of makes me sad because it's a good concept. And now nobody else can really use that concept because obviously the Shadow of the Wind did it first. But, yeah, really disappointed by this one. Would not recommend. So on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.